know you've been waiting for this for a long time. Finally, we get to talk about spring line cleats. The hard part is getting the darn things off, and I'll show you why. Now that's the one we're successfully removed. However, you can see how there's an indentation. Well, that's the rail, and there's only a specific cleat that will fit this, we found. Or we found out the hard way. I've already made a purchase of uh, the wrong size and had to go back and get another one. Of course, the uh, purchase was at a flea market, so there's no return. That's all right. I didn't pay that much for them. But the um, something you don't want to do, I suppose, uh, and this will never come off, but uh, that's the main cleat. Notice how the paint uh, is covering the threads. Not a good idea. So I'm sure we're not the only one who has this issue with there's plumbing parts near the bolts that I need to get to. Such fun. But that's the uh, great thing about ownership, is it not? After much searching, we did find the right cleat. Happens to fit perfectly. It's the same one that we had bought before. I'm just glad they're still making it. But before you can bed this, you got to get the uh, get it clear. And since this has been on there for a long time, it's hard to get it off. Would like to get this smooth. It's fairly smooth now. Apparently I didn't put a lot on the first time around. Fine sandpaper. I don't like using that paper. I'm afraid I'm going to get the uh, get the gel coat off too. Oh, here we go. They're running around it here. I don't ever recall these leaking, but then again, uh, due to their location, I don't know that way to notice. That is hot. It's been sitting out in the sun just a few minutes. I, I can't touch it. I don't remember when we put these cleats in last, but it's been decades. That looks good. Now, it says to uh, wipe it off with the non-alcohol based product and the uh, adhesive. Uh, I'm using uh, the 3M 4200. Uh, I'm not using the 5200 because that's uh, more of an adhesive than this is. This will allow us to uh, change these cleats out if we ever need to do that. It's recommended for this purpose, whereas your 5200 is more uh, permanent uh, than this is. One of the things about this, it's, as you know, this is very expensive. It comes with a cap with a nice little, well, it doesn't have a poker. Huh. Usually they have pokers in them, and then it also comes with the, uh, the snout, of course. You've all seen that stuff. Uh, what you want to remember to do when you're done is just take this off and then make sure you seal it with this cap. That's the only hope you've got that you'll have uh, unhardened product the next time you're going to use it. And this tube was about $17 at your local uh, nautical supply house. So, you uh, don't particularly want to waste any of it. Now I'm going to snip a, a, a real small opening on this, uh, probably about right there. Uh, most of what we're doing, at least today, is going to be these small spaces. So I don't really want to put out a, a big goober of it, because I know this, this stuff is unbelievably sticky and messy. It gets all over everything that you wouldn't even believe. Well, being in Florida, we do have mosquitoes that fly even during the day. And you can kind of hear them in the background there. When you get bit by one of those, you know it. I'm thinking maybe I don't need to have that, uh, that funnel or, or spout there. Uh, we are doing flat surfaces. So let's um, see if this will work. It just might. I don't know anything about this particularly. I've, I've done it a couple times, but I would imagine you just smear this stuff on there. Fairly thick. Cue the stuff. Yeah, this, this is nasty. Nasty goobers, I tell you. I 
That should be more than enough. We'll do it down here too. I'm going around the outside there, thinking about water. You have to think about your adversary. In this case, it's water. This is probably going to goober out pretty good. All right, so I'm going to set that down. Put the lid on. This is from better experience, by the way. And we'll go down and kind of goober it around. Yeah, it's coming out pretty good. And then we'll... Screws will get coated as I put this in, of course. Isn't that pretty? Now the sound effects I had to pay a lot of money for, so I hope you're enjoying them. I certainly am. And there's a screwdriver here. Every tool up here is too hot to touch, so be careful. Here we go. This will be a little tougher starting out. Yeah, I, I get. I didn't know why, but I get. I noticed. Yeah, they get the, uh, the threads get some of that goo in it. Oh, okay. Which is a good thing. Yeah, it should seal it, right? Yeah. Getting close. Yeah. You want to give it the last couple turns? Yeah. Okay, let's uh, put your screwdriver on the one that's diagonal. It'll be on the outside forward. Okay, got it. With other uh, similar materials like this, that it's uh, better to let it set up and dry and then come back and cut out that excess. I could try to wipe it now with the cloth with mineral spirits on it, but it's just going to smear. So we're going to leave it look ugly for a while. Since it's over 90 degrees here today, uh, the instructions tell me this will uh, cure or get a tacky cure in about 15 minutes rather than a half an hour. It's supposed to cure within 24 hours. Uh, so we should be all right. I don't see any rain clouds on the horizon for a change. I've got a green little video thing, it looks like. It should be red. Press the button.